Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sugandha and in this video I'll be covering what courses you should be taking during your master's if you want to pursue a career in computational neuroscience. Um, I just posted a video on Worldwide Neuro a few days back and Ankita Datta asked this question in the comments. So I thought I should make a video so that I can answer this question for multiple people at once. Um, so I can start with my journey and uh, what courses I took during my master's to give you an idea of what kind of courses you might take. I'll begin by telling you a little bit about my background. Um, I did my undergrad in electrical engineering at University of Waterloo. And it was during the last year of uh, my undergrad that I actually stumbled upon uh, this TED talk. Let me share my screen and show you what I'm talking about. So this is a TED talk um, by Professor Chris Elias Smith, um, you know, on how to build a brain. And I just stumbled upon uh, this TED talk during uh, my last year of my undergrad. And I um, actually realized then that uh, Professor Chris Elias Smith was actually teaching at the University of Waterloo itself. And so um, because of that, um, I just went and talked to him. And that's how I actually, um, you know, ended up doing a master's afterwards in his lab. So um, when I talked to him, um, I decided that uh, I would take his course. So I bought this book, actually. Uh, this was a book um, which is written by Professor Chris Eli Smith and um, Charlie Anderson. And uh, the book is called Neural Engineering, and it covers some fundamentals um, of uh, how representations uh, happen in the brain, basically how you can represent information using uh, brain-like networks and how you can uh, implement dynamics in these networks. But without going into too much detail, uh, this is the first course I actually took. Uh, it's called Simulating Neurobiological Systems. Because I had a technical background, um, I did not have much difficulty taking this course. So I took it in my last year uh, of my undergrad. And this was a mixed grad and undergrad level course. So there were some students in our class who were graduate students at the time and some were under undergrad students. And although right now uh, this course is being taught by Andreas, who's a PhD student in uh, Chris's lab. Uh, at that time, Chris used to teach this course himself. And um, you can see that the course actually starts with a uh, very basic. So if you go to this web page, compneyro.uwaterloo.ca and you click on the courses tab, you will see the whole of the course material listed here. And you can click on these links and it will give you um, a, a preview of um, the lecture material and you can also download the lecture material. So here, if you look at this, you know, this is a, the book I was talking about, which was the first book that I uh, read in the field of computational neuroscience. And then this was basically my second book, uh, which I ended up reading uh, while I was doing my master's. Um, and um, you can see that this is these are basically the course topics, right? It starts with very basics of neurons, and then it covers population representation, which means how do you use population of neurons to represent information? And then there's temporal representations, which means how do you uh, represent information that is changing over time in populations of neurons? And then there are you know, other things like implementing feedforward transformations and then dynamics um, in neurons. But I don't wanna go into the details. If you want to look at uh, the details of this course, you can go to this web page and uh, you know, there's all kinds of um, slides and course material, which has been all uploaded on their website and you can check, out, check it out. And, um, and so after this course, uh, when I started doing my master's, um, I took a bunch of other courses. Um, so uh, one of the courses that I uh, took was uh, neuroanatomy. Um, so this is basically, this was a course which uh, uh, was based on human neuroanatomy and neuropathology. So it was a very basic course. And I just wanted to take this course to get an idea of, of what basic uh, brain regions were and what their functional importance was. Really, um, neuroanatomy is important if you want to study the brain, right? Whether it's uh, cognitive science or computational neuroscience, knowing basic neuroanatomy was important. And that's why I decided to take this course. One of the other courses that I took was um, on memory because I was very interested in the topic of memory. So I took this course called Cognitive Neuroscience of Memory. And uh, this course uh, was in the psychology department and um, it really taught me a lot about um, long-term memory 
memory, short-term memory, how information gets consolidated uh, through the hippocampus into the cortices um, and with examples of patients like patient HM and how much we learned from patient HM, um, which is a classic case. There was a patient, uh, you know, who's who had this accident uh, by the railway station where an iron rod actually went through his brain and his hippocampus was damaged. And that's how, uh, as a field, we came to know about amnesia and how he, he actually, this patient couldn't form any new memories after their hippocampus was damaged. And so um, it, it was a very interesting case from which we learned a lot about uh, how memory consolidation in the brain works. Um, other than that, um, I also took a course in computational neuroscience. Uh, this was heavily vision-based course. Uh, and it was uh, taught by Professor Brian Tripp. And um, this course uh, covered, um, you know, basics of computational neuroscience uh, and also uh, basics of deep networks. And this is also a course which had an opportunity for doing a project. And in this course, I ended up doing a project which, uh, which resulted in a publication. And I think that's also something that I really encourage. If you're taking courses um, which are project-based, then you should really try to, uh, you know, pick up a project which really aligns with your research interests so that you can spend time on it um, and even convert it into a publication which would be useful later on um, while applying for grad school applications. And so um, another course that I took was uh, in statistics, actually. It was uh, called Computational Inference. And I took this course because it uh, cover topics like Bayesian inference, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, um, expectation maximization algorithms, and so on. And I knew that these kinds of statistical tools were going to be important for me uh, in the field of computational neuroscience. And then um, the last course which I took was called Graphical Deep Learning. And uh, this course was basically covering materials um, uh, around uh, circulating around deep networks. Uh, and this was a research based course in the sense that it didn't really have a, a laid out curriculum. Um, but what we did during our lectures was basically we had a set of papers which we would read before every lecture. And we would come together as a class and discuss those papers. And that helped us learn a lot about the field itself. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's all the courses I took actually. Uh, I didn't really take a lot many courses. Uh, during my master's, just four or five courses. Um, and that's because I wanted to spend a lot of my time doing research. So I can show you a little bit about what kind of research I ended up doing. Um, let me share my screen. And so, um, Going back to the same website, uh, because this is the lab I did my master's in, if you go uh, under peoples and click on my name, then you'll see my research interests uh, at the time of my master's and also, you know, all, uh, all of my um, contributions during my master's. So I'm just showing you this uh, because I wanted to specifically point out this paper. So this is, you can see that this paper uh, actually um, is in collaboration with Brian Tripp and this came out as, uh, a result of the course that I took with Professor Brian Tripp, right? So it was really my uh, final project for the course. And it's a very um, basic, simple paper, um, which is very short. Like you can see, this is just an eight page paper and it's just me studying a deep network, which is trained for scene recognition and comparing that to the human visual system. Uh, and I won't go into the details, but uh, the point I want to make is that um, when you're doing your master's, uh, what you should be thinking the most about is, uh, number one, you should expose yourself to the field. Uh, and for that, you can take some basic courses like computational neuroscience or basics of uh, cognitive science or some course uh, like introduction to cognitive science, which is broad enough so that it covers a lot uh, of things in the field and gives you a broad idea of what the field uh, is composed of. And uh, taking that course can help you actually also narrow down what your specific research interests might be. And then additionally, then you want to, once you figure out your research interests, or even if you are in a process of figuring out your research interests, you can also supplement your learning by taking other courses, uh, which are technical in the field, right? Just to make sure that you're gaining the skills uh, alongside the knowledge that you need uh, 
to pursue a career in computational neuroscience. Because at the end of the day, in computational neuroscience, you need skills uh, that involve data analysis and you need skills that involve building computational models. Uh, and you need skills that um, involve doing uh, uh, you know, theoretical work uh, in the field, and so you need exposure um, to all those uh, all those things. And so, um, I also recommend that you spend uh, time thinking about some research projects that you want to do during your masters, and uh, hopefully, when you're taking courses. Um, that require you to do a project in the end, what you can do is you can pick an area in which you want to do your research and then try to align the course projects with your uh, research area so that you don't have to do a double work, right? If you are interested in doing research in a particular area, then if your project is aligned with that area, then it's easier for you to make progress in that project and even get a publication out of it. So I would really encourage you to uh, take some broad courses and then focus on doing research uh, find a nice uh, uh, supervisor who can supervise you in the research and then you can also um, take courses geared towards those topics uh, that can help you do better in your research as well. So one last thing that I want to show you is um, a list of courses that are just uh, offered here at MIT. So you can see that this is a good resource, right? This is open uh, courseware from MIT and uh, we usually call it uh, OCW. And you can see uh, under brain and cognitive sciences, there's a long list of courses. I just wanna uh, point you to this as a resource in case you want to skim through them. But uh, again, I'll point out that if you're beginning in the field then you might want to take some basic courses, for instance, like cognitive neuroscience, and uh, just to show you, if you click on um, one of these courses, um, then you can see, you can go to view course and you'll see the course description as well as some uh, readings and study materials um, attached as PDFs here. So you can actually take a look at them uh, and even use these as references when you're taking the courses um, in whatever university you are. Um, so that's all from my side today. Um, I just want to summarize that uh, if you are new to the field, uh, you might want to take some broad courses to expose yourself uh, to the field and then uh, take some additional courses that help you improve your technical and theoretical skills. And when you're doing a project-based courses that require you to do some projects at the end, you want to align them with your research area of interest so that you don't have to do double work and uh, you can actually make uh, more progress and be more productive during your master's um, focusing on uh, on one topic or a set of topics that interest you and hopefully getting some publications out so that you can show that you have some research experience when you're applying to grad school. That's all from me today. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you're interested in watching similar videos, check out uh, more videos in the playlist right at the bottom of the screen. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button right next to the subscribe button. See you next time.